Okay, for the second film in tonight's double feature, I'd like to look at what we're doing with um, Coulomb's Law now that we've got a distribution, a, um, a charge density on a larger extended object rather than just a um, point charge. So in this case, what I want to have is, you know, some uh, sheet of uniform charge and some distance above it. We've got some charge Q and we're going to find the force on that charge Q. All right, nice, simple, straightforward problem. Um, so let's just figure out exactly what we're given. What do we need to look at? What do we have to work with? Well, we have this um, infinite uniformly charged plane or infinitely infinite uniformly charged um, sheet charged flat sheet uh, we'll give that a charge density um, sigma okay um, and then we're going to want to find the force. Oh, well, actually, we've got this other guy. We've got a um, charged particle. Excuse me. Um, and he's got a charge Q, and he has a distance to the plane. Of a rather exotic Z, we'll call that Z. Uh, I have no idea why I chose Z, it just sort of happened, all right? Um, and let's see, what we'd like to do is we'd like to find the force on the particle. Remember, the whole reason why we care about the electric field at this point is just because the electric field is a substitute for the force. What some particle would, what some particle would actually feel if it was put in a certain position. What force would it feel um, from some other charged object? So, again, we want to find the force using the electric field. That's that's our goal today. All right. Um, and we might want to figure out how are we going to set up this problem, right? Um, how are we going to look at it mathematically? Um, well, we need our coordinate system. That's basically all we need to do. And we say, okay, our coordinate system is, um, you know, an X, X, Y, Z sort of thing, right? So we've got um, some Z axis here and on the Z axis, we've got that charge Q. And then down here, we've got our um, x-axis, let's say. It doesn't really matter at this point. And there we've got our charge density um, sigma. This is a perpendicular um, thing here. This distance here we said was z. So we want to place this plane in the xy plane, or place the sheet in the xy plane. All right, and let's see what else can we do. Well, well we put the charge on Z on the Z axis. Uh, positive side. And that and that, along with this information here, really does define the problem completely. Um, so our vectors. R um, for the particle. X zero is equal to Z in the Z hat direction. And for our sheet, um, X one is equal to X in the X hat direction. Oh, let's call it X prime 
plus y prime in the y hat direction for any x prime or y prime in the real numbers. It's any old any old number. Um, so that's what we've got for our vectors. Um, then we need a strategy, right? How, how are we going to cope? Now, now that we know where everything is, how, how are we going to actually solve the problem? Uh, first thing we want to do is we want to set up the integral. Okay. That's always good for business. Um, two, we want to simplify. Simplify it with um, symmetry. We'll use um, some different symmetry conditions. Uh, that, that's always important. Um, symmetry is our friend. Um, then we'll manipulate it and solve it. And let's see, what can I get on the side here? How deep can I get this? All right. All right, so then somewhere down here, uh, we'll find the force um, with the definition. As I said, that definition is F equals QE, right? Um, or F01 is equal to Q0, E1, R01. I guess that's how we write it in class, right? So, setting up the integral. So let's just go ahead and answer all that sort of stuff on this other side. Uh, let's see, what do we have to answer with? Um, Coulomb's law, right? In that integral form that I talked about in class or we'll talk about very shortly. Um, so let's just write that in um, Cartesian coordinates. It's always a good idea to just start off that way, start off with the Cartesian coordinates and figure out what else to do later. Um, so we've got our charge density, we've got our distance, which is um, x prime squared plus y prime squared plus uh, z squared. And um, then we also have our direction, so it's going to be from um, x1 here, right? Or from x1 here to x0, so it's x0 minus x1 divided by uh, the um, distance again. So we get one more factor of one half down here. Um, uh, so that makes it three halves, excuse me. One more factor of one half makes the whole thing three halves. And so we have minus x prime x hat minus y prime y hat plus z z prime or z times z hat, excuse me. And we're going to in integrate over x prime and y prime. Okay. Um, but we want to think about the symmetry here. All right. We're allowed to move this guy out over here, and exactly the same thing that happens here will happen over here. So if we have um, an electric field here going that direction, then the electric field is going to do, go out in that direction. But if uh, we also have a mirror symmetry, anything that happens here, if we flip it over, right, if we flip them together like um, two sheets of paper and then rub them together and get mirror images. Uh, that has to be true too. So this also has to be true. So the z component, this tells us nothing about the z component, but it tells us that if the um, electric field is at an angle there, then both this, then the x component both has to has to be this in this direction and or an equal and in an equal direction in an equal distance or an equal magnitude in that direction. So this has to be equal to its negative, which means it's zero. So we can ignore, can ignore the x and y integrals. So 
there is there is going to be no um, there is going to be no solution in those two directions. So we can just ignore them completely. Um, one other thing we can look at is if we look up here, if we rotate this around, it also doesn't matter, right? It doesn't matter if we look at the X or the Y or some 45 degree angle. Everything looks exactly the same to, to this problem. It's got complete cylindrical symmetry, so it's probably better to transform to a um, cylindrical coordinate system. So that's what I'm going to do. I'm going to simplify it with those symmetries. Uh, we have the same constant, um, but instead of integrals from minus infinity to infinity in two different directions, we have a radial integral from zero to infinity and an angular integral, integral from zero to two pi. All right. Um, uh, this distance down here, we train, we switch from um, x, y, z to s theta z. So um, instead of x hat pro x prime squared plus y prime squared, we have s prime squared um, plus this z squared to the three halves. Um, z goes to z, so we we will stay with that. We still have the z hat and we still have that sigma. Um, now this integration goes now um, with s prime d theta prime and um, d s prime. Okay. So now we need to manipulate things and solve it so we can pull this sigma z z hat out here and the four pi epsilon naught and we can do the integral from zero to two pi because we don't have any thetas in here and then we can just integrate from zero to infinity of s prime over s prime squared plus z squared um, to the three halves, right? And um, we're and that's in ds prime, and we're actually in luck because this is a perfect integral, right? Um, so we then have uh, sigma z over two epsilon naught in the z hat direction, and we want to uh, multiply. Then we have this minus one over the square root of s prime squared plus z squared, zero to infinity, which is equal to zero minus minus one over z. So this cancels, that minus one will cancel, and this square root of z over z squared cancels with that z. So we have sigma over two epsilon naught z hat. That's really, really interesting. That means that no, no matter where you are above that plane, right, you have the same, um, you have the same electric field. And therefore, if we find the force, no matter where we are, we have q sigma over two epsilon naught. So that force is also always the same. This is something you can actually do with gravity as well, and and you find out that the force is always constant um, if you have an infinite sheet of rock, by for example. Uh, you'd end up with a constant force downward, which is very, very close to what you get um, at the surface of the Earth. So people thinking the Earth is flat might not be, gravity is not the thing that's going to prove them wrong, right? Um, there we go. I, that's a nice simple explanation there. This is going to be very important. Um, when I talk about, when I talk about Gauss's Law in class, I'll do the same, same problem in class and we'll get the same result and you shouldn't be surprised because, you know, just because we use a different method, we doesn't mean we get a different result. In fact, we better get 
the same result no matter what me method we actually use. So I'll see you in class.